Craig Martell, welcome to the podcast. Hey, great to be here, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have a new book coming out today, um, t- a Tom Dublin book, Ultimate Payback. It's the fourth book in the series that that he's been writing for us, but this book is a little bit different. Can you tell us why? Oh, this, this book is uh, one that Tommy outlined while he was uh, going through a second bout of cancer treatment. Uh, we talked him into outlining the rest of the series, a nine-book series, and uh, – he, he wrote this while he was in the hospital, and uh, unfortunately, Tommy has passed, so we had this one written, so, uh, and we uh, collaborated, we consolidated our efforts, and uh, and wrote the book according to his outline. So the first three books were written or were written were written by Tom himself, and yes. uh, so this is a this is a different approach, <clears throat> uh, more of a collaborative process for these books. And the idea, the plan is to continue the series um, for at least nine, or for nine books if the if the fans want it, right? Yes, we're actually going through six books. Okay. And we we uh, took the money for that we we're going to use for the last uh, three books and just forwarded that directly to his family. Okay. Just to make sure we were uh, spending our money in the right place. Yeah, that's uh, that's a that's a great sentiment. And I I saw in the blurb that I I was reviewing earlier today that all the money from this book. It, all the money from this book is is going to Tom's family. All, all the profit. I, all, yes, I mean, the cost yes. the cost of the production of the book, uh, just, like the cover and the editing. But that, outside of that, everything else goes to Tom's family. Yes. So, uh, uh, I mean, the 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 cost of of writing the book that's that we ate that mm-hmm. that's a donation to the long term revenue stream for Tom's family. Can you just give us a little background on the series itself for people who maybe haven't read uh, book, books one through three, which were Gravity Storm, Lunar Crisis, and Immortality Curse? What's sort of the story behind the story for this series? Well, well Tom came to us. Tom was traditionally published for 30 years. That was his, uh, that was his thing. He wrote The Scream Street, which was both a, a TV show as well as uh, children's books, mm-hmm. and he made his money – Going from school school to school, talking about the books and talking about uh, storytelling for really? children. Really, yes, that's that's how he made his living until the first bout of cancer hit him about three years ago, uh-huh. and then uh, he couldn't travel. And once he couldn't travel, he's like, I, I need a, a revenue stream because this was how I made my living. And he started looking at at self publishing, and he has a completely irreverent sense of humor. Uh, he is he is absolutely hilarious. So when we met him, we're like, oh, man, we, we need this guy writing for us. And so finally he was able to pull the trigger and uh, and write the first uh, the first few books. And w- where did you meet? Did you meet at the first 20 books conference or somewhere else? I, I met him before that online, but then he was able to make it to London. So I did meet him in person in okay. London in January uh-huh. of 2018. And it seems like everybody that was in London for that conference that met him just speaks glowingly about him. He, he must have been just a, a wonderful man. Oh, oh, he was hilarious. And you could see he was in a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. He couldn't move his head because he had throat cancer and it affected his neck. And he had a little bit of lockjaw, so he couldn't open his mouth very much. And uh, he shrunk. He was 5'6". And because of that, he was down to 5'2". Oh, my God. And so, so he looked up and, and he was hilarious no matter what he said. It just uh, – it, it, what a great guy, just overall a great mind, always looking to make people laugh. And that uh, – even uh, Barry Hutchison said his last words, the very last words he spoke before he passed away were was a joke with the nurse who uh, who took, drew his blood. She drew his blood. He made a joke <laughs> with her, and uh, he closed his eyes, and that was it. So like minutes, within minutes of passing away, the last thing he did was to try to make somebody laugh. And I know a lot of the comments for the series that he's that he's written for LMBPN have been, you know, a great story, but B, man, is this stuff funny? Mm-hmm. And so yes. it really flows through in his writing as well. Do you think did, was the collaborative effort able able to contain or retain that that sense of humor with the fourth book? When I went through it, it wasn't as as overwhelming and over the top as Tommy's, uh-huh. but it was still there. There were still snippets of, of genius, of, of great humor, and I hope that we delivered to fans. People need to understand that it is different, that it was uh, written by different people, and actually this one was written by four different people uh, over the course of uh, three months uh, uh, to bring it home. 
and there's there are those snippets in there and and I hope that people understand and then it resonates and mm-hmm. they and they smile when they read it. Yep. I know. I remember being in a bookstore, a mystery bookstore in Massachusetts in Boston years ago. Um and it was after uh, Robert Parker, a well-known mystery writer had passed away and I was talking about a recent book of his that I had read and the uh, the owner of the bookstore said, you know, that wasn't him that wrote that, right? And I did not know. I thought he just had a backlog of these things mm-hmm. that were still being published. I did not realize it had been written by somebody else. And when I thought about it, it was slightly different, but the characters were there. And yeah. that's that's what I that's what I read for the characters. And that's what we were shooting for with this one. And hopefully the fans agree and and say it's good enough and uh, and it worked for them. And book five will be even better. We have our beta team uh, engaged with it right now. It's already it's already written. Mm-hmm. So book five is with the beta team now going through chapter by chapter to make sure we try to work in Tommy's voice. How do you, when you're collaborating with authors on stories, how do you how do you work with them in, in building the stories? Like when, when this first came to be, uh, what was mm-hmm. involved in creating the storyline for the series and the characters? J- just getting the brief and, and talking back and forth. Uh, so with Tommy, Tommy was in Slack. We talked there. And, and he would present his, his ideas and go through it. And then also one thing that he did, because his production schedule was really hit or miss depending on his health, mm-hmm. so he would send a chapter at a time. And then we'd review those one chapter. It's like, okay, yes, this is canon. This works well or or, uh, or it doesn't. And here's what we recommend. And Tommy would take that to heart, make the changes, and move forward and, and do the best that he could with what, what he was capable of doing. So it was a really it it was an intense effort on his part to get the words Mm -hmm. and and then and his humor always, even if he only had a sentence or two, you could guarantee there was going to be humor in there. Uh And you mentioned the word canon. And this is a this is written in the Cretarian Gambit universe. So there's there's all this history. There's all this Cretarian Gambit history that has to be right. And that's got to be yeah. hard for somebody that's new coming into the into the universe to write. But the, but the beta readers and the insider team, uh, some folks that uh, from the uh, just in time readers, mm-hmm. they're the ones who make sure that it's canon. Because I haven't read all of the series, and they have. They've read every single book, right? And so they just they live it, they adhere to it, and they bring up those issues, and we correct them. We correct them to make sure that the universe is consistent. Across 150 books or however many are in Cartharian Gambit universe. I wish I could give you the exact number, but I don't know what it is either. I, I don't, know I, I don't even know how knows. many books. I, I don't even know how many books I've published. So <laughs> little. So I, I mean, uh, I, you know, at, speaking about publishing lots of books, Tom, when when we built the uh, the the book list for for his first book, it, there was a lot of books there. That was almost like a Craig Martell length um, book list. And I wanted to say, yeah, hey, dude, you need to put this on your website so we can just do it by series. But uh, we didn't do that. It's just a long list of books. So he's been writing for a long time, or he had he had been writing for a long time. He he has he has. But once once he uh, stopped visiting schools, uh, we found out the true uh, nature of his uh, trad pub contract. He was getting like one penny for every book he was selling. Oh my goodness! It was it was almost criminal. I'm, I I was appalled. At hearing that, and we're like, no, come write for us. You'll get, you'll get your just desserts. You write a mm-hmm. book, you get your, you get your cut. Yep. All righty. So the book is Ultimate Payback. It's coming out today. Go grab it. Help to support Tommy's family. Um, read a great book. And if you haven't read the first four, feel free to start with the first one, which is Gravity Storm. And we'll have links to those in the show notes. So, thanks everybody for listening, Craig. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Peace, fellow humans. <laughs>